This is Eamon Khan here for Boxing Social in association with Betbread. Here today to talk boxing on a Tuesday evening with the one and only sniper, the boss, Lerone Richards. Lerone, first of all, how are you doing? I'm good, my friend. Yourself? Yeah, yeah, not too bad, not too bad at all. Um, Lerone, before we get into the boxing, as I mentioned, you met Frank Bruno recently, a legend of the British boxing game. How was meeting Frank Bruno? Oh, do you know what? It's quite overwhelming, really, because you see him on TV and... Um, you know, he's got that iconic laugh as well. Um, so it was really nice to meet him in person. Um, I went to a charity event with one of my sponsors. Paul Murphy, and um, it's a good event. Did you manage to pick his brain on any fight and get some tips from the old legend, Frank? Do you know what? I never, you know, just more, he was just telling me just to keep working hard and, you know, um, just stay focused. And um, when you stay focused, good things will happen. And I know you're a Wimbledon fan. The football season is getting started. You've got the top on there. How are, How's it looking for, for the Wimbledon team? Well, we had our last game, or the first game of the season um, the other day, and uh, we won 2-0. And uh, I can't wait to see what happens um, later on. You've been approached for any charity football uh, matches or anything, Lerone, and would you be interested in, in any of those? Do you know what? I've been, I have been approached by many. Um, I would love to. I'd love to do things for charity, but it's a situation where, like, with me, it's either all or nothing. Mm. And I don't want to go into a football game and then break my leg. So, <laughs> and then I'll be out, out of a fight. So, um, I have been approached and I will do it one day. Um, but uh, obviously, you've got to be a bit careful. Oh, for sure. I completely understand that. Um, but I imagine you'd be a whiz on the football pitch as you are in the boxing ring. Lerone, let's get into the boxing then. Um, I, I, might, I remember seeing you in um, interviews in the past and you kind of, you'd aired your frustrations in terms of, you know, you had your rise last year and then we're, what, now eight months into the, the new year and we haven't seen you quite, we haven't seen you yet in the boxing ring. Um, so, I mean, you were at a position where you were frustrated then. I imagine that those, those frustrations and not being able to, to be back in the ring and be active are just heightened because we haven't got anything for you just yet right now, Lerone. Is that a fair kind of thing to say about where you stand right now in this year for you for boxing as well? Uh, um, I, feel, yeah, I can agree with you know, what you say there. Um, I'm not so much frustrated now. Um, I, I went through that, that phase, um, but now I know that I can control what I can control and that's to stay in the gym and, you know, keep working hard and, um, working hard on my craft. There was a mention yesterday, Eddie Hearn said on his live uh, on Instagram that the deal that you had with Matt Truman was up. Um, could you elaborate in your own words where you stand right now promotionally then? Well, I'm free agent now and my team, uh, myself, um, S Jam, my team are looking at the options I have and um, we'll go with the best one for my career moving forward. Again, just kind of wrapping up with like the previous question with kind of the rise that you had last year to then kind of be ended up as a free agent that kind of, again, I, I would kind of uh, get a sense of feeling that maybe there's a frustration that you had that rise and there's you're kind of ready to step up to something bigger and then here you are kind of just blunted again, if you if you get what I mean. Yeah, um, I had a good year last year. You know, I showed the world that I was one of the best. And I felt like this year I'll be able to push on and um, potentially get my hands on or get in contention to one of the major world titles. And um, yeah, it's uh, eight months into the year now and I still haven't boxed. Um, I've been in the gym, um, learning, improving, but I haven't boxed and I haven't had the opportunity to, um, to show the world how much I've improved. There was talk of a fight with Ali Akhmadov, which was offered. From your standpoint, can you tell us why that fight maybe wasn't made, or if it didn't make sense for yourself? Well, when I boxed Carlos Gungora in December, um, I had two weeks out of the gym. I was straight back in. Um, I've not left the gym, if in all fairness, at all since um, since January. And um, earlier in the year, there was a talks of fight of a fight, which fell through. But then there was another fight offered to me. And then in April, um, 
there was talks of uh, me fighting Atmedov. Um, and um, that was in April to fight Atmedov in September. So me being a promoter, um, having a promoter, um, I felt like my promoter wanted me to sit on the shelf for nine months of the year with no fight and then jump into a big fight with a, with a fighter that my previous opponent knocked out, which didn't make any sense, you know, moving forward in my career. You know, if you look at my career, most of my fights have been about progression, you know, British or Commonwealth, British. Then I wanted to move on to the European and IBO world. You know, I'm trying to make the right steps in my career to be the best fighter in the world. And um, it just wasn't good enough. Um, a fighter like me shouldn't be out of the ring nine months. No fighter should be out, should be out of the ring for nine months, especially at my level. Um, so yeah, me and Matrim part, parted ways. Um, there was also talk of potentially an outing for you in June, I think, but you mentioned that the fighter that was in question lost the fight that he was supposed to, well, he was in theory going to win for you to then set up that fight. Um, there was rumours that potentially being a, a Gabriel Rosado, was that the case for that fight? Can you elaborate on what that plan was? It wasn't um, Rosado. Um, it was uh, obviously... It, it was Felix Sturm. He was fighting in a final eliminate for my Iowa world title. Um, obviously, he got beat. Um, so that fight didn't make sense for me to make it happen. And uh, we had to move forward. But then there was no plans, no dates given to me. Mm-hmm. So I've been sitting on a shelf in the gym, no injuries, training, um, with no date, no confirmed date. And that's why I was frustrated. And I, I had to vent it out a few times um, over the platforms um, because I am one of the best fighters in the world. I've proven that and I felt like um, I should have been um, treated a lot better. Um, but it is what it is. Um, we move forward now and the future is bright. There were a number of uh, fighters in the same division as you and also the same stable that you were once in at Matchroom, those being John Ryder and Billy Joe Saunders. Billy Joe Saunders uh, is looking to make a comeback. John Ryder has been a lot more active. Uh, frustrations there as well that maybe those fights weren't talked about more, maybe potentially could have been made? Well, I w- I've been, you know, speaking a long time and I've been quite vocal that I would love the John Ryder fight. I think what well, I felt like it made a lot of sense, um, us being the two best fighters in the country. And look at John Ryder since he boxed Daniel Jacobs. He's been very quiet. He ain't had a fight date. I've been sitting here after beat Gungor on no fight date. So it only would have made sense to show the Great Britain and know who the super middleweight is. And um, and then the winner, I mean, him could fight Canelo or for one of the major titles, you know. Um, but that fight wasn't even spoke about. With that said, then moving forward and moving on, you want to uh, get kind of your promotional status sorted. You'll have offers fielded on the table too. Can we expect that you will be sifting through those offers with you and your team and then out soon? When can we expect a movement for you then to eventually be back in the ring? When do you expect that to be? I believe I'll be out from this late September, early October. I'll be out um, and I can't wait. Um, I can't wait. Lauren, let's just get a, your thoughts on a couple of things and I'll bring it back to you. In the time that you've been out of the ring, we've seen Jordan Gill, uh, the yeah. thrill living up to his name against Karen Gurphy. It was a while back now, but we haven't caught up with you since that. Uh, can you just reflect on Jordan um, with just pulling out a punch from punch from the gods, maybe some might say <laughs> it was a, a brilliant shot and on the road, road to recovery now and should be out in the ring soon also. Yes, you know what? I was so proud of Jordan that he pulled out of the bag. Um, Jordan's been in situations like myself where, you know, he hasn't had um, the most active career and he's always had to stay in the gym. Um, always had to stay in the gym and stay dedicated. And um, he got his opportunity. And I know a lot of people are saying it's a punch from the gods, but this is a punch that we drill in the gym. You know, the the work that we do in the corner sometimes, Dave tells us, Join the gym, and um, I'm just so proud of him that he he pulled it off. He pulled it off that night, and um, the future is bright for him. Big fights from now on for Jordan Gill. Big fights for Jordan Gill. Big fight coming up in the offing in the division that you're in. Canelo versus Triple G trilogy fight, undisputed fight as well. Your thoughts on that one? 
me, I'll be honest with you, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, that's me being honest. I just don't care. You know, whoever wins, wins. Whoever loses, loses. It's not my problem. Why? Can I just? Could you ask you to elaborate on that one, Lerone? What? Why is that? Is is it just because the situation you're in now that you're not too bothered about anything else? Is that is that why? No, you know what it is like. I'm in the Lerone Richards business. I'm strictly focused on becoming a legitimate world champion, and Canelo Alvarez has my belts. And if Triple G beats Canelo Alvarez, he'll have my belt. So the winner, I want to fight. So I will be watching the fight, but I won't be watching the fight as a fan. I'll be watching the fight as a future opponent. No, that's fair enough. A good response as well, too. Let me get your thoughts on something that you will be watching, not as a future opponent, as a fan this time around. A lot of talk about uh, Usyk and AJ and what AJ has to do to get the win over Usyk in the rematch. Your thoughts on that one? Well, when it comes to rematches, it's the person that makes the, the most adjustments. Obviously, watching the first fight with AJ, AJ needs to make adjustments. I know a lot of people saying, oh, he needs to be a little, more, a little bit more aggressive, but that's easy said than done. We know how good Usyk is. Uh, I'm sure um, Anthony and his team are aware of this, and I'm expecting a better performance from Anthony Joshua. Um, I would love to see him win. But we know it's a hard ask. But um, we have to wait and see what happens on the night. If you cast your mind back a, a few years, there was talk of you and a fight with uh, a person I did an interview with a few days ago back now. And it was a good little rivalry between yourself, but the fight never materialised. Uh, that being yeah. Umar Sadiq, I did an interview with him. And it turned out that he'd... Um, retired actually and is now pursuing a oh. career in, act in acting uh, just a word uh, from you Lerone uh, about Umar and um, the fight that we never really got to see at that at that stage would have been a good fight between you two yeah um it's, that's the first time I've heard that um you know I wish I knew well I've known Umar for a long time um we boxed for the same club Repton ABC and I wish him all the best in his future endeavours Fair enough. Well, well, well said. Well put. It was good to speak to Umar as well. Let's bring this back to you. You looking to get out very soon? Do you have a feel, a sense, or a feel that it has to be a big fight that you come back into this year because of the 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 want to have activity, the want to kind of get yourself, push yourself, and capitalize on the momentum that you had last year? Does it have to be a big fight that you're in next? You know, it. You know, with boxing, you just don't know. There could it could be a big fight, but for me now, it's about getting at. Is about getting in the ring. Um, that is my main priority right now is to get in that ring and stay active. And, you know, the more active I am, the better you're going to see me perform. Lerone, it's been a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you so much for speaking to Box Social. We await your return to the ring and we'll, we'll catch up soon when you have some further news. Thank you very much. You know, just last thing, um, I just want to thank my family um, for all the support. Um, my sponsors, FCI Markets, Love Teeth Dental, Pool Strength Roofing, MR Scaffolding um, for all their support as um, without them um, this wouldn't be possible and also Lucky Block as well. Appreciate that, Lerone. Thank you so much for speaking to Box and Social.